Well, good morning. Uh, I'm with John Swinton this morning, all the way from Scotland. How are you doing, John? I'm doing very well, thank you. <laughs> the lockdown. Yeah. John is the Chair of Practical Theology at Aberdeen University, and John and I have known each other for about 10 years or so, and, uh, and over those years I've really come to respect the work that he does actually in a number of areas. Uh, both with uh, Deviant Mental Disabilities uh, and the writing that he's been doing there. Uh, he has been uh, a significant voice. Uh, and also his background as a psychiatric nurse really brings a unique uh, element to this conversation. That's really what I want the conversation to be uh, around John. Uh, I'm hearing particularly in these days that, uh, that people uh, are struggling uh, with this isolation and being kind of locked down and just wondering uh, what... Uh, what some of your thoughts are around about maintaining mental health uh, in these days and some of the challenges uh, that come with that? Well, there's lots of frustrations that come from being trapped in your own house or feeling you're trapped in your own house. But one of the, the main ones is, is loneliness because it, people are very often lonely anyway. But if you're lonely and you, you can't even go out to look at people, then you find yourself in a very difficult position because... Plus, that the whole idea of social distancing, which is really important from a, a, a medical point of view, actually psychologically is quite problematic. You know, I find it really troublesome when I walk down the road and somebody crosses the road yeah. to get away from you. And so you're always assuming that the person that you're about to meet is going to is a danger to you. Uh, and that, that, that's not it's not a helpful way of thinking about relationships. So loneliness, social distancing have you know significant impact in the way we think about ourselves and the way we think about other people. Yeah. So what about as we are supporting, uh, it is, uh, Christian Horizon supports uh, people in, in their own homes, community homes all across. Uh, we have some people that are living in, in independent apartments, like you said, that are, gonna, that are experiencing more isolation than uh, what they normally experience. Uh, what are some of the things that maybe that we can do or think about that as we are, are trying to support others who are experiencing this isolation now? Yeah, well, obviously there's electronic communication like this, Zoom conversation, which is, which is at least a way of contacting people outside of your own uh, room or outside your own house. So keeping that kind of communication open and getting used to that way of communicating is helpful, but also uh, you know, social distancing means that you have to be, what is it, 1.5 meters away or whatever it is. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't stop somebody um, sitting on, at the doorstep and somebody else walk, taking the, the daily walk and to stop and, and, and having conversations. There's nothing wrong with having conversations with people. It's just if you really don't get too close. So organized times when you can just go, like, for example, uh, we, my wife and I last weekend uh, had a, a mother's afternoon so we went up to her mother's house and just to make sure she was okay and she sat in her son house and we sat on a bench and we sat and talked for ages and then we came home and then we went to my mum's did the same thing so you, you, there's no fear of infection and these are very vulnerable people so it's very important that's taken, that's taken uh, seriously but it was such a boost for both of them my mum's my 95 now and uh, also my wife's mum's 89 just to have that, these few moments of conversation, even if you can't touch, people, you know that people remember you. And I think it's, it's possible to organize that as an aspect of your daily hour that you're allowed out to, to you know, make it constructive, make it spiritual, make it relational. Yeah, yeah. So interestingly, it's, it's uh, making it spiritual. What do, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean spiritual in a, in a, in a broadest sense that, you know, um, there's something inherently relational about the way human beings are. And if we find ourselves in isolation or, or feeling that we're not part of a community, we start to get, get anxious, we start to get concerned about ourselves, our own identity in that sense. So simply meeting with people and knowing that people are caring for you actually is really, really important mm -hmm. at that spiritual level because it reminds you that you're not on your own. And ultimately, if, you know, if you're a Christian, it's, it's a way of remembering the body of Christ still exists mm -hmm. on earth, even though you yourself don't feel that at that moment in time. Yeah. 
So some of those uh, practical things that, that you were just talking about, uh, it's, it's taking advantage of the technology uh, that, uh, that we have available to us and helping people to connect with that technology. Uh, it's uh, being intentional uh, about ta still taking those, those walks and, and having a chance to uh, six feet away to sort of stop and, and, and chat with people. Uh, and, uh, and remembering that, that, that we're connected. And anything else sort of uh, on a real practical level? That, uh... Well, just m making sure that you, the people are in contact. So in other words, if you're aware of people in your area who are liable to be isolated, or if you're somebody who feels they're isolated, make sure that your congregation or your organization has a list of people that may be vulnerable at this particular moment in time, and just get people to call them up. Just give the phone people to, to, to you know, just to do the very basic things to help people to be remembered in that sense. Because it's not, it's not complicated to overcome some of these feelings of anxiety and these isolation. It just takes a little bit of organization, mm -hmm. and a little bit of intentionality. And you've got to notice it. You've got to see that's part of, of your ministry and part of the way that you are with people. Yeah. So I think these things are fairly straightforward. Electronic communication is good, but it's different. It's, it's, I, mean, I, you know, I travel a lot. And so I use Skype a lot or Zoom or any of that. So, and if you're in a hotel room on your own and you're speaking to your family, for example, and then it's, it, it's, the conversation finishes and you switch off your computer, suddenly you're more lonely than you were before. Because That's a good point, you know, yeah. You can't get the normal ways of saying goodbye. You just switch off the computer. They're right there one second, they're the next. So whilst uh, electronic communication is helpful, it's not the ultimate solution. We need other ways of being together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John, it's, anything that's kind of surprising you during this time, any kind of new insights uh, or bright spots that uh, you think that maybe this experience is, is teaching us or, or showing us? I think it's teaching us to be aware of that we are, uh, although we think we're individuals, we're actually deeply connected and as a society and indeed as a world. Mm -hmm. We can't be anything on our own. I think that's that's a helpful thing to remember. That actually, we're all we're all vulnerable in, in a variety of ways, and all dependent on one another uh, in, a, in a variety of different ways. Um, but it's also taught me, I, I think, more negatively that anxiety can be a real blockage for love. Now, one of the things I noticed certainly in the UK early on was the general thrust of the the, the medical advice was that it was primarily people who were vulnerable or who had, had pre-existing morbidities that were liable to be find the, the uh, virus difficult. And, and a lot of people find that quite anxiety relieving. Because, you know, people, I have people saying, well, I haven't got any, any underlying uh, problems, health problems, so I'll be okay. And it struck me as that's a, that's a, that's a very negative way of dealing with anxiety. Uh, to, to, it's, it's, a, it's a, bit, a bit like, you know, when Bono sings that song, well, tonight, thank God, it's them instead of me. <laughs> I can't think of a worse way of thinking about things. So that anxiety can push us to think only about ourselves. Um, so as Christians, we need to recognize that anxiety it can be helpful, but it can be dangerous, and overcome that and recognize that love cares for the whole of your community, uh, not just yourself. And the vulnerable within your community are, are actually very often the most important people in the eyes of God. Well, John, the danger is, is that you and I could uh, keep talking for hours, <laughs> but uh, we don't have hours, we have minutes. And uh, just any, any final word for, just as a word of encouragement for those that are listening today. Well, the only thing I would say is that, you know, we live in the res light of the resurrection. And the resurrection gives us a new way of viewing the world. And although we're in the midst of the trials and tribulations that we have just now, it's kind of like we're, we're experienced in the chaos of the cross and, and all the brokenness that Jesus must experience then. Mm -hmm. But there's always hope because the resurrection came out of that chaos, came out of that lostness and that sense of bewilderment that we're all experiencing just now. It's clarified and comes to a solution in the resurrection. So there's hope. It's going to be a difficult time. There's no question about that but we will come through because the Spirit's with us, and how could we not? Yeah. John, I, it's, I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but would you mind just closing, closing our session in prayer uh, today? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're a God who loves us, who cares for us, who is with us in all things, and good things and bad things. You're a God who...
who will never let us go. And even in the midst of our suffering, you're working towards our redemption. And we just thank you. And we, get, we thank you for your love, for your peace, for your hope, and for the precious gift of Jesus. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. John, thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, it it's, was a very good conversation. Thank you very much.